So in conclusion, the beginning of the history of intelligent testing and IQ in modern psychology and questionnaire studies is seen through Sir Francis Galton's interest in studying human intelligence um, and through his statistical work that he did on that subject. It progressed into um, more statistical research um, given Carl Peterson's viewpoint uh, that later transcended into the Binet and Simon scale. So rather than just researching and trying to understand human intelligence, trying to actually test for human intelligence and categorize it was first seen in 1905. Um, this later then progressed through the years and eventually developed into um, different applications such as that in the Henry Herbert Goddard um, applications. We see the Lewis Terman applications with his military studies in addition to the uh, genetic study of genius. Um, the Department of Applied Statistics is also important to help organize these newfound tests that are measuring individuals' intelligence and abilities, uh, cognitive reasoning, and what they have learned in school. Um, later on, we start to become a little bit more structured, a little bit more organized, a little less biased um, through the creation of SATs, ACTs, um, <clears throat> and the Wishler Intelligence Scale for adults and children. The only thing is, um, we still do see um, a bit of racial, <clears throat> class, gender, and cultural cultural biases uh, within the SAT, ACT, and Welsh intelligence scales. Um, this is later going to be slowly and but surely removed and progressed out of through the KABC and CAS tests. Um, I believe that the CAS test in 1983 was truly the turning point uh, in intelligence testing in modern psychology mostly because it no longer focuses on neurotypical individuals and trying <clears throat> trying to categorize them and understand and label their intelligence rather than it's uh, rather than that it's more so a way of studying neurodivergent individuals who may have some kind of learning disability or attention deficit and it allows to find resolutions and different methods of teaching these people so that they could become uh, more understanding, more aware, more educated, more informed. <clears throat> and the CAS test, I believe, is also a turning point within this timeline because it lays down the foundation for what should be followed by within intelligence testing, such as PASS and IDEA. And it shows how a well-rounded intelligence test should be taken. That is not to say that there isn't at all any kind of differences between um, people who take the tests. There is still some slight differences in results amongst African American communities, Asian communities, and uh, Caucasian communities, but it's very, very, very little compared to the SAT and the SA, uh, ACT scores. <clears throat> we then also see in 2000 how uh, the Supreme Court is starting to acknowledge psychology and psychological findings and IP. Uh, IQ and intelligence tests as a means of impacting the way that we run our judicial system and whether or not someone is morally capable of being um, euthanized. Um, however, in modern day views, we do realize and acknowledge that IQ testing, while it may have its benefits, Ultimately, the system is too general to try to categorize an abundance of people, cultures, races, and identities within um, to accurately gain results. And that progression will decrease over time, not necessarily because people are less intelligent, but mostly because uh, the development of technology creates us less dependent on our cognitive resources um, and what we've picked up in school because uh, knowledge and information is more accessible. 
Um, new trades and skills are also now more accessible through the increase of technology. And in addition to that, we also find that these biases um, are detrimental to not only individuals themselves, but society themselves. Um, and it doesn't take into consideration the melting pot that the United States really is. Thank you and have a good day.